And just from seeing the back of God, the, the awesomeness, radiance of God, he ends up shining full of light. So much so that the Israelites were afraid of him when he came down the mountain. The Bible's calendar is basically lunar, okay? If you didn't know that, lunar. It's adjusted for the solar, but it's lunar. Every Hebrew month begins with a moon, the new moon, new month. When the moon reaches its fullness, it's the middle of the month. There's always, you, whenever you look in the sky, ever see a full moon, you're in the middle of a Hebrew biblical month. Even in English, the word month comes from moon, month, month. That's how it came. That's how all our months came. Each new moon was called the Kodesh or the new moon about newness or in God and every month then reaches the fullness. Now, now there's been some nights in ministry at a service where you see some people acting weird and, you know, people, and, and people say, ah, oh, it's a full moon tonight. Well, in Hebrew, the moon is beautiful here. The greatest celebration, the full moon is beautiful. The greatest celebrations in the Bible took place under the full moon. The Pass Passover begins always on the full moon. What, what does it say? Remember? It says on the night of the 14th of 14. That's right in the middle, 14, 15, right in the middle of a month. Always the full moon. That means when Jesus died on the cross and when they was taken to the tomb and when he was in the tomb, it was a full moon over Jerusalem. It's full and it's about fullness. He said it is finished. He came to give us fullness. It's done. It's complete under the full moon. Shavuot, Tabernacles, the greatest festival in the Bible, a shadow of heaven when everything's going to be completed and full, begins when? Under the full moon. It says the bride is like the moon. She's like the moon. The moon is, moves, every month it moves to fullness. It moves to fullness. So why is the bride beautiful like the moon? Because she is to be moving to fullness. She's always, to, you know, the moon is always, is being transformed. It's always changing. It never stays the same. The bride is always to change. The, the only way you can, you can become who you're supposed to be is if you're changing. If you're open to God. To change me, Lord. Change me. And yet, the moon, when it becomes full, didn't really, in one sense, it changes. On the other sense, it doesn't. In one sense, now you see more of it. Now you should be seeing what the moon is. So the Lord wants you to change, to become something, but not something who, you, who is not you. He wants you to become who you are. The, the moon becomes, when it's full, become, that you become full, that I become who I am supposed to be. You become who you're supposed to be. You don't become someone else. You become who you are supposed to be to begin with. Only the Lord gives you that power. Only in the Lord. You have the moon, but the moon isn't the moon without something else. And that is the sun. The sun in Hebrew is the word shemesh. Try it. Shemesh, it says at the end of the end of this Hebrew scriptures, Malachi, at the very end it says, but for you who wait for the Lord or fear the Lord, the Shemesh Tzadik, the Shemesh Tzadik, the son of righteousness, S-U-N, shall rise, shall come with healing in its wings, will rise upon, the son of, the son of righteousness is Messiah. He is the S-U-N, he's the S-O-N, but he's the S-U-N. He is the light of God, he said, he said, I am the light of the world. Now he's the light, but in, in, in the natural realm, we have a shadow of that. It's funny to say that the sun is a shadow, but the sun is the shadow of him who's the light of the world. He lights up the world. When he goes up, everything lights up. He rises and everything's lit up. When he goes down, everything goes down. He rises. In fact, you know, you know the fact that, that when people were needed healing, they went up to him and they grabbed the hem of his garment. And the word for the garment the hem, the hem is kanaf. Now, now in, in Malachi, when it says the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings, the word is kanaf, same word. He will, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his corners, his wings, and the same word that when they touched his corner, they got healed. What did that tell you? He's the son. He's like the S-U-N. He is the light of the world. What does that tell you? The moon, how is the sun different from the moon? How is the bride different from the bridegroom? God and us. The moon has no light. The moon has no light of its own. It cannot generate it. it can't, if it turns away from the light, it has no light. You know, so, so first of all, if, it, if, if, if the moon turns, at, no matter what the moon looks like, that's what it becomes. 
So us, if we dwell on the world, we have no light. If we dwell on ourselves, no light. Dark. Dwell on our sins, no light. Dwell on what? No light. But if we turn ourselves to face God, then we light up. The, the bride is like the moon. She has no light of her own. We have no light of our own. But we are still meant to shine. See, there's no real such thing as moonlight. We call it moonlight. But think about it. And I know, like it's funny, because I mean, on one hand it's so simple. On the other hand, you know, it fools us every time. We look at the moonlight. Oh, that's moonlight. No, it's sunlight. All moonlight is sunlight. All moonlight is daylight. But it's daylight come to you at night. The moonlight is the, re is the reflection of the sunlight. The moon has no light. And so what this tells us something like it's a, this here from this one little thing is something so important for our walks because we, we tend to be us-centered. Even in the Lord, we tend to, our, nat our human fleshly nature tends to be self-centered even in the Lord. So here we are. Now we're supposed to be, we know we're supposed to be loving, we're supposed to be holy, we're supposed to be pure. So what do we do? We try to produce it from ourselves. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm trying, Lord. I'm trying. And we're dwelling on ourselves because when you're focusing on what you're doing, who's, who's the center? You are. If I do good, I did great. If I do bad, I did bad, but I'm focusing on me again. You understand? But that, that's like the moon trying to produce the light. Cannot do it. So don't be, don't be discouraged and don't be amazed that when you do bad or you don't, can't do good, that's just the way it is. But the, the moon has no fire, but the sun is a fire. You know, something happened interesting this week where the sun just emitted, it's like a big piece of the sun just went out. They never saw anything like it. The, the sun is burning all the time. The sun is, 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 is nuclear fusion. It's all, it's, it's, all, it's, it's massively burning. It's burning. The, the moon doesn't burn. So what does that mean? The only way the moon can shine is to reflect the light of the sun. The, the only way the moon can become a light is by reflecting the one who is the light. So you learn this secret. You know, we tend to focus on our works. I'm going to do it. I did good. I did bad. Produ we want to produce works. Stop trying to produce works for God. I mean, listen, your heart is right if you want to produce work, but you can't do it that way. Yes, you want to do that, but you can't do it. But stop focusing on trying to generate, produce the works. Instead, learn to become the work of God. Amen. The moon, in a sense, becomes the work of the sun. By simply reflecting, it's all, not doing any. it's just the sun is the active thing going on, but it's saying, yes, come on. If you become his work, you'll produce all his works. Amen. The moon shines with the light of the sun. You will love with the love of God. You will, the, the secret is to live in the living of God. Is to do everything as a reaction to God and then you act upon it. You know, see the problem is we're reacting to the world too many times. We're reacting to our problem. We're, God doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to react to him and then act upon the world. Shine to the world. Amen. The moon, the bride is as beautiful as the moon. She is a light, but all reflected light. That's the key. The whole key is reflected. Moses, remember Moses? When he saw, when he was on the mountain, he said, God, I want to show me your glory. I want to see your glory, Lord. That's all. Please. And, and the Lord, I want to see, show me your face, your panim. Show me your face, your presence. And God says, you can't see my face. You would die if you saw my face. It's too, too, too much. He says, but I'll let you see my back. So Moses sees the back of God. And just from seeing the back of God, the, the awesomeness, radiance of God, he ends up shining full of light. So much so that the Israelites were afraid of him when he came down the mountain. He had to put a veil on his face because the, the light in the face of Moses was too great. Think about that. All he did was see God and he became this glorious light. That's what the moon does. That's the secret of the moon. The moon is always, what's it doing? It's not producing, it's receiving and giving. That's it. It's receiving the light, giving the light. As soon as, the, as soon as the moon receives the light, it gives the light. There's no gap. Think about something. We're all, you see all different colors around you. You know, you see this, you see, you know, if you see the color of anything, that you, um, except for like black or white, but you see, you see a color. The color, if you're wearing red, if you're wearing whatever you wear, it's because 
your, whatever you're wearing is not key, holding on to the red. It's receiving all light, holds on, absorbing everything except red. In other words, whatever you see is what has not been kept. It's been given back. Do you understand? Something, something that is blue is because it doesn't keep blue, so you see it as blue, but it keeps everything. So all the light comes in, gets absorbed, but the one that goes out is what you see. Okay, whatever it doesn't hold on to. What does that tell you? You are not what you, try, what you hold on to is what you're not. You are what you give. Amen. What you give is what you are. What you hold on to is what you're not. If you're self, you hold on, I gotta get more, I gotta get more things, I gotta get more things. So it means you, you don't have anything. You're poor. If you're selfish, you're poor. But if you're giving, even if you don't have a lot, you're giving, you're rich. Because what you give is what you are. If you give love, you're love, you got love. You are, whatever you give, give. The moon gives, gives of the light, gives all the, and that's the bride is to give the light too. It's the light of God. She receives from her bridegroom and she gives of that to all. And so when you, receive, when you give the light, when you shine light, you become a light. He said, you are the light. He's the light of the world. But he said, you're the light of the world. He's the sun. And you become the moon. He's the light of the world. You become lights in the world. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.